Hello and welcome back to On The Clock, the show that I neither plan or write or anything. I just get some questions and answer them without any preparation at all. Okay, so the first one is from Saad. Uh, he said, how many Priuses does it take to kill a Honda? Are we talking the road going Prius or the race Prius? Because the road Prius could never kill a Honda, but the race Prius can. Lux S LS7 or the Ford 427. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I like them both for different reasons because, well, although actually, okay, my entire knowledge of V8s, I'm gonna be entirely honest, is from the 60s. Okay, I don't really know much about the modern ones, and that's because the only ones I was taught about, like, the power figures and stuff are the ones from the 60s, and I never really looked into the ones, say, past 1969. And the thing is, V8s, a lot of cars back then were actually six-cylinders still. Uh, I think Ford was the first one with an eight-cylinder. Anyway, off-topic here. The thing was, a an old Mustang used to have a higher top speed than a Camaro. But it was really hard to win a drag race with the Mustang because it was so high geared. It would spin the wheels in third gear. I mean, it was it was pretty insane. But the Chevys were lower geared, so it was easier to get a grip. So any any driver, if you had two low skill drivers racing each other in a high spec Camaro and a high spec Mustang, Camaro would generally win simply because it had better grip and it's easier to control. However, if you knew what you were doing, the Ford would win. So, but from these two engines in particular, I'm probably going to have to go with the Chevy LS7. Simply because I know more about it, plus you can put a Chevy LS in quite a lot. You can take that as you will, whether or not you like V8s and everything from General Motors, but... They are, they are easy to work on, I will say that. And finally, Deadpool asks, If you had to give up the Accord right now, what would you look to replace it with? This is a lot more loaded a question than most people realize, because the Accord's already getting replaced. So, the situation with the Accord, originally it was supposed to be mine. It really was. And that's why I made the garage post and stuff, is because it fell into my possession. Well... Recently, uh, my dad wanted the Accord back. He really did. He missed it. So he's getting it back, and I'm replacing it with a Civic, which has been ordered and will get here September-ish. It does have a six-speed in the floor, which is what I'm most excited about, but it is the Sport Turbo. It's, well, the Sport is Turbo. It has a one and a half liter in line for no VTEC. And what's interesting is the Civic is actually I would say almost the anti anti Civic joke Civic because think about how many times people have said, Oh, VTEC is not turbo. Well in this particular case there is no VTEC, but there is a turbo. It's the opposite of what people are used to. So I'm I'm pretty happy about it. It's it's a lot faster than a lot of people let on. I I've already test driven one, and a lot of people are like, well, 180 horsepower is nothing, you know, you can't do much, especially in a modern car with all the safety features and all the weight. Even though it's a hatchback, it's still not that heavy. It really isn't. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel brought down at all. It, it It's kind of the same situation with the uh, AE86, to be honest. The AEA6, a lot of people are like, well, it's slow. And a lot of people say this with the BRZ, FRS, GT86, triplets. It's all power to weight ratio. Nobody really talks about the weight of these cars. Just because something is 180 or flat 200 or 132, that doesn't say it's a slow car because you could put 132 horsepower in, say, a motor scooter and suddenly you've got something that's insane. So it's, I would say it's part of weight, but yes, I am replacing it with a new Honda Civic Hatchback Sport 6-speed. 
those are the only questions I got a couple days ago. It's been kind of slow for me lately. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, so I haven't been able to make any videos. But more videos are coming. I actually, I actually do have a few planned that are getting through. Some are getting written. Some are even good. I know me making good content is kind of rare, but it's going to happen. So until any of that's released, just have this filler content, I guess. And I'll see you all next time. Make sure you like and subscribe if you feel like it. This is Clock Arena. Clocking out.